In this video, we're going to discuss chapter 7 regarding steady state heat condition. So, what is heat? Heat is a form of energy that exists due to temperature difference. Heat is transferred or flows from a higher temperature to lower temperature region. Heat transfer can take place by conduction, convention, as well as the radiation in a steady state or in the transient conditions. Steady state conduction occurs when the temperature at all points in the solid body does not vary with time. Below here is the example of the conduction process in the first image. The second image shows the process of convention and the last one is the radiation example. In this chapter, we're going to discuss or to solve the problem 1D steady state conduction. As it is the easiest heat conduction problem. In 1D problems, temperature gradient exists along one coordinate axis only, either in X axis or either in Y axis. The objective of our analysis is to determine the temperature distribution within the body and the amount of the heat transferred or known as heat flux. Consider heat conduction Q through a plane wall in which there is n uniform internal heat generation Q. Therefore, the heat flux will increase due to the internal heat generation. The energy balance across this wall is shown in this equation, where Q is the heat flux per unit area, A area normal to the, to the direction of the heat flow, and Q is the internal heat generation per unit volume. By cancelling the term QA in the previous equation, we can obtain Q is equal to dQ over dx. For 1D heat conduction, the heat flux is governed by the Fourier's law, which state that Q is equal to negative K times the difference in temperature, which is dT over dx. The negative sign is due to the fact that the heat flow from a higher temperature to lower temperature regions. Next, by substitute equation 2, which is state that Q equal to negative K dT over dx into equation 1, which is Q equal to dQ over dx, we obtain this equation. The governing equation has to be solved with appropriate body conditions to get the desired temperature distribution. Q is called as a source when it is positive, meaning that the heat is generated, and is called sink when it is negative, meaning that the heat is consumed. In a steady state heat conduction problem, there are three types of thermal boundary condition. The first one is a specified temperature, meaning that the temperature at the outer wall either on the left or on the right side are being specified. The second boundary condition is the specified heat flux, meaning that the um, uh, heat flux that being specified will flowing into our system or flowing out from our system. The last one is the convention at the edge of surface, which is to take into account the convection process that occur either on the left side or on the right side of our wall due to the ambient conditions. In order to solve a steady state heat conduction problem using finite element modeling, the wall can be modeled using 1D element. To obtain a reasonably good temperature distribution, the wall can be discretized into several 1D heat transfer element as shown in this figure where this wall for example 
has been discretized into four elements. There is only one unknown quantity. At any given node, there is the nodal temperature, as shown in this figure. So we have five nodes, meaning that there are five temperatures that need to be determined. For a given element, as shown in this figure, the temperature varies along the length of the element. Therefore, we need to establish a temperature function so that we can obtain the temperature at any location along the element by using interpolation. To simplify the problem, it is assumed that the temperature varies linearly from node 1 to node 2 as shown the figure below this slide. Remember, the heat flow from higher temperature to lower temperature. That's why in this figure, it shows that T1 is higher than T2. In order to obtain the temperature function, we need to get the equation of this line. By using the common linear line equation, T equal to mx plus c. m is the gradient or the slope of this line given by the common formula for the slope y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This value can be obtained by referring to this figure where y2 is equal to t2 and y1 is equal to t1, while x2 minus x1, by referring to above figure here, is equal to the length of the element. Therefore, our m is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by le, or the length of the element. Next is to determine the constant c which is the intercept value of y exists in this figure. By referring to this figure, c can be obtained by looking at the intercept of this y axis, which is t1. Therefore, c is equal to t1. Once we have determined the m and c, we can write our temperature function as shown in this equation. And this equation can be rewrite in the proper manner as shown here. Therefore, we can simplify our temperature function as T equal to N1 T1 plus N2 T2, where N1 and N2 is called the shape function. The term dt over dx in the governing equation can be expressed in the terms of element length and the donor temperature vector in order to define the heat flux. From our temperature function that we derived previously, we can obtain the temperature gradient dt over dx by differentiate the temperature function. This gradient temperature can be rewrite in a metric form as shown here and simplified as dt over dx equal to matrix B times matrix T where matrix B is given by this equation. Then the heat flux can be expressed as the equation shown here. The element conductivity matrix KT for 1D heat transfer element will be derived using the same method in the previous chapters, which is potential energy approach. Recall back the conduction governing equation with internal heat generation is given by this equation. By imposing the flowing two boundary conditions, Temperature at x equal to 0 is equal to T0 and the heat flux at x equal to L is equal to H times TL minus 
T ambient. And solving the equation yields the total potential energy given by this equation. Previously, we have defined the temperature function as well as the temperature gradient. Then, by assuming the heat source and the thermal conductivity of the material are constant within the element, the potential energy function becomes as shown in this equation. The first term of the above equation is equivalent to the internal strain energy for a structural problem that we have discussed in the previous chapters. Therefore, we can identify the element conductivity matrix is given by this equation. Previously, we have defined the matrix B. Next, we just need to substitute this value into this K matrix equation. And by solving this equation, we can obtain our conductivity matrix as shown in this equation. If the final element model comprises of more than one element, then the global conductivity matrix can be assembled in the usual manner to give the global conductivity matrix of the wall. Let's have a look on the first example. A composite wall is made of material A and material B as shown in this figure. The inner surface of the wall is insulated as shown on the left side here while its outer surface is cooled by the water stream with the temperature of the water is 25 degrees Celsius and the heat transfer coefficient of the water is 1000 watt per meter square Kelvin. A uniform heat generation QA is equal to 1.5 times 10 power 6 watt per meter cube occurs in material A. Model the wall using two 1D heat transfer elements. The question, assemble the global conductivity matrix of this wall. The conductivity coefficient for both material are shown in this figure. For material A is equal to 75. For material B, the conductivity coefficient is equal to 150 watt per meter Kelvin. The dimension of the wall A is 50 millimeter and for the wall B is 25 millimeter. In order to create two elements, first we have to define the nodes. The easiest way to define the nodes is by creating it at each layer in this wall. For example, we create node 1 for layer 1, node 2 for layer 2, and node 3 for layer 3. In fact, this wall can be simplified by using the free body diagram as shown, where we have three nodes to represent the three layers in this wall, and we have two elements, element one and element two. Element one, connected by using node one and node two, is represent the wall A. Element two, that is connected using node two and node three, is represent the wall B. The convention process that occur on the right side of this wall can also be represented by using this symbol. And similarly, we put it on the right side of this free body diagram. The next step is to define the number of degree of freedom for this problem. As in this problem, at each layer or at each node, the temperature is unknown. Therefore, there are three degree of freedom in this case. Once we have defined the number of degree of freedom, the next step is to determine the K matrix for each element by using the conductivity matrix as defined previously. For element 1, as it represents the wall A, Therefore, K1 is equal to Ka and L1 is equal to La. By substitute these two values into the K-metric equation, we define the K-metric as shown. 
for element 2 as it represents the wall B. Therefore, K2 is equal to KB and L2 is equal to LB. Then we can define the K2 as shown. Once we have defined the K1 and K2, then we can assemble these two K matrix in the usual manner in order to form the global connectivity matrix for this problem as shown in this slide. Now let's discuss about element heat rate vector. If there is an internal heat generation within the element, then it can be shown that the element heat rate vector due to the internal heat generation is given by this formula as shown. If there is no internal heat generation in the element, then the heat rate vector for that element will be zero. If there are more than one element in the finite element model, the global heat rate vector is assembled in the usual manner. The generic global system of linear equation for 1D steady state heat conduction can be written in a metric form as shown, where the equation is kt equal to r. Please take note that at this point, the global system of linear equation have no solution. Certain thermal boundary conditions need to be imposed to solve the equations for the unknown nodal temperatures. Reconsider the composite wall in example 1. Now, let's assemble the global heat rate vector and then write the global system of linear equation for this problem. In this case, only wall A that has the internal heat generation equal to 1.5 times 10 power 6 watt per meter cube, while for wall B, there is no internal heat generation. Therefore, QB is equal to zero. In order to obtain the global heat rate vector, first we have to determine the heat rate vector for each element using this equation as shown. For element one, as mentioned, there is internal heat generation in wall A. Therefore, by substitute this internal heat generation into heat rate vector equation, we can define the heat rate vector for element 1 as shown. While for element 2, as mentioned previously, there is no internal heat generation in wall B. Therefore, the heat rate vector for element 2 will be 0 as shown. Once we have defined the heat rate vector for each element, then we just need to assemble it in the usual manner in order to form the global heat rate vector as shown in this slide. Once we have defined the global conductivity matrix and the global heat rate vector for this problem, then we can write the global system of linear equation for this problem as shown in this slide. However, at this point, the global system of linear equation have no solution. We have to impose the boundary condition first, then only we can determine the unknown temperature. That we will discuss in the next video in part 2.